Hi everybody, it's Brittany. So today we're going over myism. As you may or may not be aware, Hahnemann's idea of chronic miasms is probably like the most controversial topic in all of homeopathy. I am not sure why, but it seems to be the thing that everyone loves to love or loves to hate. It's just, it's one or the other. And also what I find particularly surprising is that despite the fact that it's talked about ad nauseum, um, no one seems to actually read Hahnemann's chronic diseases which is his book on the topic, it's, it seems more that people just regurgitate what they hear from teachers and they loved what their teacher said or they hated what their teacher said. So as a result, there's just, there's a lot of misunderstandings and misinterpretations out there. So I will put myself at the risk of being yet another <laughs> and try and decode chronic miasms quickly for you. I will try and really just give you what Hahnemann put down in his book and what I really think he intended with his theory of chronic disease. So first let's do a quick little bit of backstory. So this is pre-microbiology. This is before we understood there were such a thing as viruses, bacteria, that kind of thing. But of course people knew that being around somebody who was sick could make you sick. And so they had this idea of bad air. So it was the, the air around someone who isn't sick with an infectious disease like smallpox or measles could make somebody else sick. And the word they used for this bad air was miasm. So Hahnemann didn't, first of all, Hahnemann didn't make up this word miasm. Miasm was a word in existence at his time to explain the fact that there were diseases that could be transmitted from person to person through the air. So Hahnemann used the term meaning infectious agent. Now he talks about acute miasms and chronic miasms. acute miasms, Hahnemann repeatedly defines these as diseases that he felt always followed the same course. So he could be sure before we had swabs and could determine what caused the infection that it was the same in fact infection. So measles will always follow the same course basically and so he could always identify a case of measles with extreme accuracy so he would call these diseases like measles or smallpox where again it follows a very strict course an acute miasm okay so if he's talking about an acute miasm all he's talking about is an infectious disease that always looks the same which means we're only going to have a small group of remedies that's going to help because the symptoms are always going to be the same Before we go into really his nitty gritty of chronic miasm, I want to set the stage again a little bit with what was going on in his practice when he came up with this idea of a chronic miasm. So Hahnemann didn't have a lot of success treating chronic diseases. What he did have success with was the infectious acute diseases, the acute miasms, and as well as syphilis and what he called psychosis. Psychosis is the name he gave to particular strains of gonorrhea, HPV, anything that causes genital warts, which now we know are a couple different things, which is why I say it's not really like a thing, but this is what he called it. Anyway, he had success with psychosis, he had success with syphilis, and he's had success with acute miasms. Now notice what's similar between those three things is they're all infections. So he had success with infections, even infections that caused chronic complaints like psychosis and syphilis. So Hahnemann, like any good scientist, sits down and thinks, so what am I doing differently with syphilis and acute diseases and psychosis that I'm not doing with something like asthma? And he develops this theory that he basically bases off syphilis. So if you understand syphilis, you'll understand his idea of chronic miasms. Okay, and he basically ends up treating all chronic diseases like asthma as if they are an infectious disease like syphilis. I'll explain more what I mean in a minute, but first I want to talk a little bit about syphilis to make sure we all sort of are on the same page. So syphilis, if you think about it, is a kind of chronic infection. So you have sex with somebody who's infected with syphilis and like any infection, you get infected pretty quickly but you don't necessarily get symptoms right away. We all know this. So, you know, if you 
breathe in the air around somebody with the flu, you don't immediately start getting a fever and headaches and chills and things. You might develop it a few days later. So there's this period between when you become infected and when you become symptomatic. Okay, this is called the prodromal phase, usually, in modern parlance anyway. So the first symptom of syphilis is something called a chancre, which is an ulcer that's very distinctive and specific for syphilis. Now, this is where I have to give you a little bit of a caveat. Hahnemann's understanding of syphilis is different than what we understand syphilis to be now. So I will tell you what Hahnemann believed to save time and make it simpler, but I'll include some resources down in the description below on our modern understanding of syphilis in case you're curious, because I don't want you to run around with 200 year old ideas of syphilis. So, <laughs> so what Hahnemann believed was once you got the chancre, if you left the chancre alone, you would never get other manifestations of syphilis. You would only have the chancre. If you treated the chancre, which was common, people would burn it off, they would use uh, mercury to take it off, um, then you would develop other manifestations of syphilis. Now syphilis is a pretty horrendous disease in that it can affect almost every single organ system in your body. It can go to your heart and cause heart problems. It can go to your brain and cause things like dementia. It can go to your skin. It can completely erode your fe features. Like there are pictures of horrible, horrible consequences of syphilis. So it was not like syphilis caused one thing. It started with one specific skin eruption, the chancre, and if that went away, it could create any kind of other horribly destructive uh, chronic disease, essentially, even though we would call it a syphilitic chronic disease because we know it would come from syphilis. Okay, so then going back to his success so basically the chronic disease he was having the best success with was syphilis so he started treating everything like syphilis so what he did with his idea of other chronic diseases was he said okay so basically everybody in the world will get a skin eruption the most common type of skin eruption is some sort of vesicular eruption where you get bumps often it's itching often it's red quite commonly it's worse from heat so he said what if we all get this skin eruption and then it's not uh, just a benign skin eruption, but it's from one specific organism like syphilis and the chancre. So with syphilis, you get the chancre with this other chronic disease, you get the vesicular eruption. This other chronic disease he called Sora. Now, once you got the skin eruption, if the skin eruption went away, the disease would go latent. You wouldn't necessarily know it's there. And then suddenly, when you're under times of stress, it would break out in any number of ways. It could break out in any single body system, just like syphilis, right? <laughs> you get rid of the chancre, maybe you feel good for two weeks, and then suddenly, bam, you have syphilitic dementia or something. With Sora, you get this vesicular itching eruption, it can go latent, and then you can get any kind of chronic disease afterwards. He thought everything from asthma cancer, dementia, psychosis, like psychosis, like you lose your mind psychosis, not his gonorrhea psychosis. Those all could be due to Sora, that you got this one chronic infection, after latency, you would go under some period of stress and that would break out secondary Sora. Okay, so I know this probably sounds crazy. To be honest, the first time I tried reading chronic diseases, I got like, I don't know, 15 pages in, and he started going through all the different symptoms of Sora, and I was like, seriously, Hahnemann? Like, you think this one infectious organism that we now know doesn't exist because now we have microbiology caused like everything in the world except syphilis and gonorrhea and HPD? Like, that's ridiculous. Like, why would you think that? And I think I just like threw the book across the room and didn't touch it again for like six years because I was just like, this is stupid. I'm never using myasms ever. But... <laughs> The reason I set it up with Hahnemann was having trouble in his clinical practice is because after he developed his theory of chronic diseases, he got better results in practice. So there has to be clinical significance to it because it helped him treat people better. When he was only looking at 
diseases in small chunks. So he only looked at the asthma and prescribed a remedy only for the asthma. Then he only took a remedy or took the case of the eczema and prescribed a remedy for the eczema. He just didn't have the great results he did when he looked at the totality. So really what I believe changed with his idea of chronic diseases is that his idea of totality got a lot bigger. <laughs> it was no longer the totality of any one disease. It was the totality of everything the person has gone through. Okay, so I hope that has cleared some things up for people. I hope that made sense. I know it's a lot to go into in a short amount of time, but I hope it was clear. Okay, till next time.